Just letting you know, this is only my spoiler first impressions of the episode. Check my pinned comment for a free gift related to this video. And to watch my unfiltered reactions with exclusive bonuses, join my Asha Media TV Club. The link is in the description box below. Now, here's my afterthoughts of this episode of Fringe. Boom. Okay, they are doing it. They are doing it, and I have yet to see if it will be with a twist. Because the show, you know, when they're laying out things to be somewhat obvious on the surface there's a twist <laughs> okay okay so i'm anticipating possibly the you know the, just he's just gonna get used to this timeline and then there's gonna be a hiccup essentially okay let me go from the beginning here a little bit and try to see what i can decipher Oh, not decipher. No, no, I'm not gonna overthink things. At the moment, from what I think I've understood on this first watch, the merging is more than just Westfield. It's Olivia, and with all this set up to get Walter to accept Peter as his son, and then we see Peter so gung ho get that machine going, so I can go back to my people. But then his people could actually just now be his people here in this timeline-ish. So, if I'm correct, and I'm saying this just rhetorically to myself, it's like, or to you actually as viewers, anyway, if, if, if that's the route they're going to take, aside from Peter figuring out stuff with the machine, on one hand, I think that's very, I'd say clever, because it, it matches up with it being the case, considering Olivia has the ability to go from, well, I, I understood she had the ability to go from universe to universe, not necessarily timeline to timeline, but I guess that's what this validates now. Her Cortex fan ability allows her that, allows her to, I'm having a hard time understanding how, I mean, in season three, we had Olivia be given full Olivia's memories, right? So it's not like this is not something new where she can take on the memories of someone else. As I had said as a commentary during my paused moment, it's, it's the fact that they've established this Olivia as not being someone that went through the trials completely. So I thought that she would have to have gone through the trials completely, just like our prime Olivia did, in order to even have so much of a saturation in her physiology with the Cortex fan stuff anyway. That's kind of where my confusion is with that. Okay, so the beginning we opened up with her, I guess it's not a dream, then it's a memory. And as the episode unfolds, she's merging with the memories and thoughts of that Olivia. And then essentially then making her his Olivia. And then we had that whole scene where she's like, tell me about your Olivia, right? And then he again tells her about that Olivia, which reminded me of when he was talking to full Olivia at that time, so that full Olivia can get the info she needed to impersonate Olivia. <laughs> God, it really is just kind of like dee, 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 connect the dots here and there. And then missing a lot of dots, but that's okay. I think the main thing here is just they're gonna likely make this his his timeline to stay in. Okay. And if that's the case, then the observers shouldn't have an issue with that. Because now I'm thinking back. Right? Why does September see Olivia dying in any timeline? Unless what is happening to Olivia in this episode shouldn't happen. So I'll leave it at that. Let's let's let me just focus on the story then. Leave the rest to all of you to however you can try to shape up your summaries. Because some of you are really good at that and I really appreciate it. So we'll leave it at that. I'm just gonna talk now, you know, some really interesting moments, especially at the diner. With the rhubarb pie and the poor Walter. <laughs> I was totally Walter and that was really good for getting the viewer to feel his fright and scare with that man when his, his double talk. I was very effective in sounding the alarm of what was going on at that place and yeah, the double irises. That was cool. Okay, let me just kind of fast forward more. 
Yeah, and then the loop of them going in, like, back to Westfield, back to Westfield. I like how they played that out. That was really good in the car. Very effective in getting you to feel even more just like, what the hell? They can't leave. They are just going round and round in circles. And I had mentioned it, it's very reminiscent of um, a lot of horror movies. I, I think there's even a Twilight Zone episode like that that I remember from a long time ago. I've been watching old time, uh, old time, Twilight Zone episodes on YouTube. Sometimes during work when it's pretty slow with activity. Okay, what else here? I mean, this is a pretty straightforward episode in terms of what's happening on the surface of things with Jones using that stuff he got from the quarry, as he said. I forgot the name of the stuff they mentioned, but the fact he's even getting to this point of creating the, this problem just goes to show that this season likely is going to have a pretty epic finale, uh, you know, that's going to top Erasing Peter? <laughs> That's going to be exciting. And then now, you know, with all the hype some of you are throwing at me with season four being so amazing, I'm believing. And I'm only episode 12, man. I'm believing. Yeah, just this one scene. I noted it in my reaction, but I wanted to say it again, how highly effective simple things can be to show the horror of a situation by showing the man coming out of the, uh, the school building or wherever he came up from. And he has a bloody doll. Wow, right? Your imagination goes wild as to what he was up to or what's happened. And you're just thankful there's no visuals of it aside from that. I'm going to leave it at that because there's not much else I can say except for what I've already kind of put out there as possibilities of what's going on with Olivia. And uh, my mixed feelings about it. Mainly because I really wanted to see. Yeah, yeah I think it's because I kind of hope there will be an, a real adventure of him trying to build a machine back and get in there and go back to his timeline but at the same time I do like how they could just bring the timeline to him in this way if that's what they're doing so you know TBS to be seen how things turn out there all right Ash emoji wise I'm gonna definitely give this a five it deserves it through and through there's nothing I wouldn't change. I mean, pacing was just right. The horror elements, the, the mystery, the extra layers of information as to what's, you know, what I couldn't understand anyway. But rewatchability is high just to try to understand that. So while I'm editing, I will definitely be listening to some more scenes and matching it up with some of your comments, should you leave any. Alrighty, I'm good to go on that. <laughs> I just stopped back onto the face of the the double face guy. Really good effects. It's definitely aged quite well. Alrighty, so yeah, there you have it, people. Those are my thoughts about episode 11, 12, not 11, 12. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to reading your comments about this. Any extra tidbits you want me to know in terms of trivia if you know any trivia that'd be great so if you want early access to my reactions to fringe way earlier than what you're seeing here on youtube join my club at ashamediatvclub.com link is in the description box for you there you'll also find some bonuses that i share only with my club members okay you know the drill tuning out peacing out until the next episode of fringe bye thank you so much for watching be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos